Okay, I hope that everything is okay right now. Do you hear me all? Super. Uh, so this time our archaeobalt archaeo turns to the southern part of the Baltic Sea. And together with uh, Bartosz Wędkowski, who is also um, the crew in archaeobalt, uh, who is also the person responsible for archaeobalt uh, project from uh, University of Gdańs, would like to share with you our um, experiences uh, related uh, with um, <coughs> Uh, excavations at Stronghold in uh, Ovid with um, public archaeology, archaeotourism, and its potential uh, in um, <clears throat> an area of the South Baltic uh, Sea region. Uh, Ovid is uh, one of the biggest strongholds uh, in Pomerania, uh, which is which is located uh, near um, Starogard Gdański. Oh, it's, oh, oh, sorry, it doesn't cooperate. Okay, uh, Starogard Gdański is um, this area. Is the place um, from, let's say, from a Gdańsk agglomeration perspective is middle size a city where live less than 50,000 people. And the distance between the Starogdańskie and three city is around 40, 50 kilometers. Uh, it is possible uh, to get down there by the public transport, use the train or the bus, or other option, use the car. And from perspective, um, from um, ex excavations at of its perspective, this uh, public transport uh, communication was important elements because, uh, element because um, you had to organize organize your time and find the time uh, to um, come to visit uh, the uh, the place. Uh, archaeological sites in uh, Starogardyski uh, region. Uh, they are very well uh, presented. We have in this area a few uh, strongholds. And one comment, when I am using the term stronghold, I'm not thinking about classical fortification. In Polish, it's grodzisko. I would say uh, it is kind of fortificated uh, settlement. There's this kind, of, this type of um, places had various functions, um, and they were very uh, common during the Middle Ages. Now I'm thinking about 10 and uh, 12th century, and uh, of it functioned function between uh, 10 and uh, the beginning of 12th century. Uh, but coming back to archaeological sites in Starogard Gdanski region. You may have found uh, their uh, strongholds, graveyards, uh, settlements, but they are not very well visible uh, in the landscapes. So you have to know uh, on what uh, would you uh, should look uh, for. And this is uh, also the uh, point uh, in the discussion related with uh, archaeotourism. Um, uh, the oldest information about Ovid uh, um, are from the Middle Ages. Uh, the place name uh, appeared for the first time in the Teutonic document from 1348. Then um, the place was localized at the historical map from 18th, 19th uh, century. And uh, during uh, 19th century also, um, this place appeared in the first, let's say, research publications from the 19th and the beginning of the 20th uh, century. However, at that time, we didn't have any archaeological research at this uh, place. Uh, if we go, uh, if we, we should also focus a little bit on um, archaeological experience and the way of, uh, of working at uh, Stronghold uh, uh, at Ovid. Uh, first, first excavation, let's say regular uh, archaeological excavations we had during the 70s of 20th uh, century. But before that time, there uh, had been organized 
a kind of field walkings. And for many years, also the local community see that this place is special because of the some reason. They had a problem to explain them. Many people during our discussion on the field, especially the, 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 the local um, inhabitants, they told us that they were spending down there their free time when they were a child and they found a lot of pieces of pottery and uh, during the 50s, 70s, 60s, they completely didn't know what to do with that. And they only knew, knew that there's some, some very unique and special, uh, special place. Um, archaeological uh, research, uh, we, made, we may divide to two phase, phase. Phase, first phase is related to uh, this typical research excavations, which took place during the 70s. And uh, after the year 2000, we have um, excavations related with uh, contract uh, archaeology. Um, at that time, um, a local authority decided that uh, near the stronghold will be built a culture institution, which right now is called Gorodzisko Ovid, Ovid Stronghold, uh, which is function uh, very well. And they have uh, very interesting um, observations re observation related to um, the archaeology and uh, the visitors, what was very uh, interesting uh, for us during the uh, excavations. Uh, the first season uh, led it, uh, first season of excavation led it by uh, University of Gdańsk, who was in 2017. And together with uh, Bartosz Świątkowski, we had the pleasure to uh, to work <coughs> to work down there. Uh, we had also great support from from the uh, from the students. Uh, during this archaeological research, uh, which took place during the 20th century, uh, uh, thir 35 trenches were uh, tested. And um, the 10% of, set, uh, of settlement area has been investigated. So it's relatively, it's not a big uh, part of the uh, settlement, uh, especially, um, as I said, it's one of the biggest stronghold in, um, in this part of uh, Pomerania region. However, we are not going to, uh, to excavate all the uh, area. Very important um, part is the localization of stronghold. It's near river, which is called Wieżyca, and is uh, located on the natural hill. So uh, our uh, during the um, research, we focus mostly on the area which is uh, on the top um, of the um, hill. The artifacts uh, which were discovered during the archaeological research uh, we also have uh, several groups. The most, uh, the, the biggest group were the elements related with everyday life, like spin wheels, a fishing hook, knives, queers, uh, wet stones. Mm, they were quite, uh, quite often. And what is very typical for um, strongholds from Middle Ages and early Middle Ages, I'm thinking about 9th and 11th century uh, in Poland, uh, is pottery. Uh, during the excavations, um, uh, during the, the, let's say, first stage of excavations, during the 20th century, down there was discovered around 37,000 pieces of pottery. So it's really big group and there's a lot of work. Uh, related um, uh, to that. Next group are, I would say, more um, unique uh, artifacts like jewelry made from the bronze. You may see here some presentation um, earrings, uh, temple rings, uh, some pendants, um, and uh, um, Artifacts which were made from the silver, which are not so unique. We have, once again, earrings, silver coins, but also we have some, uh, some, some weapons. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, how the situation looks like after the year 2017, which are, what are our first results and uh, observations um, related to uh, the uh, excavations and interaction with the uh, community, also with the local uh, community during the uh, excavations, because this aspect was very important for us uh, from the very, very beginning. Um, our um, research uh, focus on, as I said, on the top uh, of the hill near the uh, southern uh, embankment. You may here see uh, this not very big, um, the trenches here, so you may, uh, you may see it. Now, how we were working in two different, um, in two ways. One it was, let's say, classical archaeology. We uh, were digging, we were making the regular documentation. As you may see, the excavations were uh, open. It was There was no problem to come and uh, talk uh, with, with archaeologists, with the students. Uh, we had also support of a uh, local uh, association of metal detectors. Uh, here we have uh, slightly different uh, experiences than in, in Denmark. Uh, especially on, on, on Borholm, um, because working with uh, working with a metal detector in many areas is not uh, allowed. Uh, here we had the support, the person uh, from uh, uh, COP, it's Club um, Odkrywców Pomorza. It's a group uh, from uh, from Tchev and let's say in general Kochevia region. Um, we had very, I have to say, we have very good uh, cooperation um, because the person who were coming, uh, they were very focused. All elements which were discovered, they were measured by GPS. We put them on a map. Uh, person who are working with metal detector was always supported by the archaeologist or the students, uh, mostly from the master level, uh, who uh, helped and um, uh, with, the, uh, with, with the documentation. They were not allowed to dig very deep. It was around 50 centimeters maximum. So we have to be here very, very uh, careful when we start working uh, with the metal detectors. But I have to say that results were really, uh, really nice and very good. Uh, during the excavations, we uh, found uh, remains of house, uh, unfortunately, lock uh, construction. Um, and in 2019, we decided to extend the excavation uh, area. As you may see, we were not uh, dig incredibly deep, but the results were absolutely uh, fantastic. But uh, this situation, which you may see here on, on the photo, also gave a lot of uh, fantastic opportunity people who are coming to start asking the, the question and make the and and uh, be in and for us to be in interaction with the people. Um, on one of the corner uh, we found uh, Owen and down there were some lucky students who found an offering beginning house construction. It was a uh, dog um, skull. And uh, as you may see, um, we had also some uh, students from Aarhus University. Katrina was uh, one of the person who was uh, support us uh, during the uh, excavations. And she was the lucky, <laughs> the last day. Um, what kind of artifacts? Sorry, what kind of uh, artifacts we found during two seasons? Uh, last month we finished the work uh, with uh, part of the documentation, the pottery. Right now, only from this not very big area, we have around thirteen thousand pieces of pottery from the whole uh, from these two excavations seasons. So you may see how rich this place uh, is. Of course, they have different uh, forms, different ornamentation. Uh, what is very important, we have also pottery, which is older than, uh, than uh, 10, 
sanctuary. So probably the place function, uh, the place is much older than we expect in the begin uh, in the beginning, and uh, much older than information which we have in historical uh, sources. So you may see here some um, examples of the uh, pottery. Uh, other elements, um, artifacts related with everyday life, like spin, um, spin wheels, um, owls, um, knives, um, water stones, wet stones, sorry, um, piece of comb, which are extremely, extremely small, um, jewelry, here we have earring, um, yes, earring, temple rings, typical Slavonic um, jewelry, which was used by the ladies. They hang them on, on a belt on, uh, near, the, near the temple. That's why they use the, the name, um, which were made from the silver. Here we have another uh, example. Uh, pendants uh, and elements related with thread. Silver coins and weights. And these elements were very uh, important for us because they show us how the place function uh, in the past. Uh, the artifacts uh, discovered during the archeological research uh, give us very important information. Well, the, all this information in historical sources about um, the area around Ovitz are from um, 1198, so from the end of the 12th century. They are mentioned in uh, Prince Grzemisław document. He gave Ioannitz a stronghold in Starogat uh, along with the area on the left bank of the Rzyca River uh, up to the road, which is called Gia Mercatorum. Uh, on the map, you may see a lot of red drops. There are the points which are uh, related uh, to um, Via Mercatorum road. It was the threadway which linked Great Poland and the Baltic. So from this uh, perspective, uh, Ovitz is more or less uh, on this uh, area. And along the Wierzyca River here, we have a several strongholds, more or less every three, four kilometers. Uh, we have kind of this kind of settlement and let's say small fortification. So it's also option to go and uh, visit uh, visit them. Uh, how we uh, interact with the people and what kind of feedback we have. I would say that we have two different views. Something like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, uh, from, from, from our perspective. In 2017, when we uh, also organized Open Days, there was really a few person who come and uh, asked uh, us a questions, wanted to be guide, even the person in the office, uh, in, um, in the office and then the ticket office, they uh, told them, suggest them uh, that there is an option to go and see the, the place and participate in kind of activities. It was problematic, but in 2019, it is completely different uh, perspective because during four weeks we have more than 1,300 people who come and wanted to see the place. Uh, even get to uh, of it is not very easy because you have to organize this whole trip. You have to use mostly your car. You have the planet. You have to use the whole day, technically speaking. There's a lot of people, especially from uh, three cities, who are coming uh, and participate in our activities. Open days, open lectures, which were every Wednesday, and uh, in uh, Archeo family uh, workshops. Uh, students uh, were um, guiding the, um, the tourists. They have also, an, uh, they ha uh, tourists also had the possibility to participate in part of the uh, pro uh, process. Uh, mostly it was sieving. And um, there was a lot of people who were absolutely surprised uh, that they have this kind of opportunity. They were not coming one day. They were coming for a few days. 
um, and just to see how the situation looks like, how they can help. There's a lot of people, local people who are coming here and start asking the question and telling their stories. What was very um, uh, essential uh, for us. Um, uh, of course, organized groups like scouts, uh, group from uh, holiday uh, groups, uh, students also um, use their skills and um, practice their skills related with telling the story, telling about uh, archaeology. Even in the beginning, they were a little bit scared, the students. At the end, I have to say that we we're absolutely fantastic because uh, they become more open and they start to telling fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, stories. Workshops. Workshops. Um, we don't have this kind of facilities like uh, uh, in Upokra. So we tried to make something in small scale. We had, let's say, four episodes related with um, excavations uh, with uh, archaeo family workshops. Um, because the main target group for Ovids are the families with children. That's why we focus on this uh, area. So children, the first they were guided, we explained them what we are doing as archeologists, then they were able to um, be a part of the process. So they start with finding um, artifacts in special trooper area, and then they had to uh, document it and make uh, also some muse museum uh, documentation just to draw it, describe it. Of course, children in the age of eight years, the biggest fun, uh, the biggest, the best thing was to write their name. So they have um, different, we had um, a different, a very interesting experience with, uh, with that. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> We had different experience with, uh, with this uh, area and uh, the feedback from Ovid's uh, stronghold as an institution. Uh, we asked them uh, a few questions. Uh, if they see any increase related with the tourists during our um, excavations, uh, what people say after the uh, excavations? Um, if they observed any other um, interesting uh, relations and situations um, linked with uh, these uh, excavations. They said first, they have definitely more visitors. Uh, we were working here also with touristic organizations, the Pomeranian touristic organizations to tell more about the, the place and show people uh, the, the possibility that we organize this kind of event, they're very welcome to come. Important element was working with the bloggers. Uh, we had uh, two bloggers, but on excavations there came one person, it was a um, lady which uh, have blog which is called Freitanet Mojan, and she was absolutely, uh, she was very in the, the topic. And after her um, her posts, uh, they come to us definitely more uh, people. So we see here that we have to work more with the social media, more with the uh, local touristic uh, and regional organization. And this place, what we observed after this, uh, especially the, the season 2019, that people, especially local people, they are more uh, in the local history. It's very important for them to be a part uh, of this uh, um, research and they are um, more open, they are more involved uh, in archaeology um, and it's becoming, uh, it's, it's, they're more involved not only the inhabitants but also local authority. So we have a little bit different uh, experience than uh, in uh, Upokra because uh, I know that in Borhon we have, a, a, let's say, long tradition. Uh, here we had to start with this type of activities, especially at Ovid, and it's giving very good results and showing the potential of archaeo tourism, especially people were just asking where they can find this type of uh, activities, where they can find um, similar places and if there are people who are just saying, telling the, the stories about 
the place. So I see here very strong point for uh, our project and for archaeo tourism. And archaeology, like archaeology, at the end, you have always some surprises. <laughs> Thank you very much.